happy Thanksgiving to uh, to everyone. In today's in today's class, we're gonna delve into the roots of gratitude, the roots of Thanksgiving, and especially during these days, days right now that that we're feeling tension, we're feeling unease. We know that a lot of things are not uh, usual. A lot of things are not okay. And, um, and how do we deal with this sort of, uh, challenge, uh, that, that we're all faced in, that we're all facing on, uh, on, on many different levels. So the, the roots of gratitude in the United States actually go way back and they're connected to gratitude as related to the Jewish people. And it's a known thing that when the pilgrims came to the United States, they were uh, their their belief was that they are now starting the uh, uh, the new world with very much w- with what the Hebrews were doing, the Jewish people were doing in the in the Holy Land in the land of Israel, and trying to bring that belief of of God, one nation under God with life right liberty and justice and the idea of freedom of religion and the idea of you know that type of openness was something that that they emulated from the jewish people and so to take this day which is called thanksgiving is an incredible day that according to many rabbis in the for example in the united states such as rabbi moshe feinstein he said that you know people were writing to him they were like well is it a jewish holiday is it none and he was like it's it's a it's a beautiful holiday and it's a beautiful holiday that signifies actually something very deep that has to do with us as the jewish people of thanking uh thanking hashem thanking god for what we have and having this day thanksgiving is a remarkable day so it's, it's a day that we really get to 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 thank hashem and not just a day off where we have Black Friday and we have shopping and we have this and that. And on the way, you know, we have a little bit of turkey or whatever. It's, it's, it's much deeper than that. It's really a way of mind. It's a way of thinking. And it's a way that, again, the early pilgrims and coming to the United States, this is, this was the core of, of their belief, this gratitude. So where does this sense of gratitude of thankfulness of, of uh, being thankful really come from? So in our parsha, in this week's parsha, we find Yaakov marrying both Rachel and Leah. And who has children first? It's Leah. She has one child. She calls calls him Reuven, Shimon, Levi, and then the fourth child, Vatar od Vateled Ben. The the verse in Bereshit. Chapter 29, verse uh, 35 says that she became pregnant once more and she had a child, Vatomer, and she said, Hapam Odet Hashem. Now I will thank, I will have gratitude towards Hashem, Al Kenkar Ashemo Yehuda. And therefore she called him, she called this fourth child Yehuda. Vatamod Miledet. So listen to what the uh, the midrash says. The midrash says as follows: Amar Rabbi Yochanan Mishum Rabbi Shimon Ben Yochai. Rabbi Yochanan said in the name of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, "Miyom shebara Kadosh Baruch Hu Olamo." From the day that God created the world, lo haya adam sheodala Kadosh Baruch Hu. There was never a person that had this vocal th- uh, gratitude towards Hashem. Ad Shabbat Leah vehodato until Leah came along and gave gratitude to Hashem. Shenemar, as it says, Hapam Odet Hashem. As it says that now I will thank Hashem. In other words, according to the simple explanation, she's giving thanks for her opportunity. But the Midrash tells us it's something much greater. It's something which is it, it, it never happened before. Nobody ever thanked God until Leah came along and did and and thanked Hashem. 
So now that we have this information over here, okay, there's a lot of questions that we could have on this. First of all, why didn't she thank Hashem with her first child? Right? Well, well, no, she she wasn't. She was able. Only Rachel was was unable to. Have. Leah had children right away. The verse says that God saw her, that she was quote hated, like or right, and she had and she right away had had a child. So so she should have been thankful right away, right? It's a good question. <laughs> and the second question that we could ask is, what in the world does that mean? That there was no one. No one before you want to tell me the matrix is telling me, telling us that no one ever thanked God before she was the first one to invent gratitude in the world and in, in, invent being thankful. Exactly. And, and in fact, it's not so accurate because we find that Adam really, uh, we find that, that he thanks God. In certain places, we certainly find that Noah thanks God where, where he comes out and he builds a, an, an altar and he and he has sacrifices. We have Shame, the son of Noah. We have Avraham who built an altar and he was praising and he was thanking Hashem. Yitzchak, Yaakov, and... Now you want to tell me Leah is the first one to to think about being grateful? And we find that other people were, were grateful, right? So what does this mean? That Leah was the first one, so to speak, to be grateful. Here we get into a very fundamental understanding of what gratitude is. So there's two levels of gratitude, of being thankful. One level of gratitude is to thank Hashem, to thank the Creator for something that we tangibly have, physically have. I may recognize it, I may not, but if I do recognize it, I could say thank you for it. And that's the first level. And that's base, That's a very basic human level. It says that someone, someone that doesn't have what is called hakarat tov like the the recognition of good, then it's a question whether you whether you should even assist such a person if they don't have that basic that basic virtue of akarata tov. You realize, and even an animal has a basic sense of this is my owner, right? The, they they know that this this person's feeding me, this person's gives. So having that sense of gratitude is a very basic human, and it's not. A lot of people don't have this, so it's not just to be taken for granted for. It's already a big level. It's already a, a, a level. That's one level of hoda'a. Hoda'a for what you physically, tangibly have. But then there's a level of hoda'a, there's a level of being grateful for understanding that everything that God did, even though it seemed like it was not good, that it was really good. And that's something that doesn't meet the eye. That's something which is act actually purely a Jewish trait. And I'm saying that like very straight up. Like to basic to 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 say that something is there's challenges, there's obstacles, and at the same time, I have gratitude. That is a very deep level, and that's a that's that's a very innate Jewish trait that we've had since this naming of Leah Yehuda, because the name Yehudi Jewish comes from the word Yehuda Ode of thanking Hashem, and in fact, it has God's name in it. Yehuda has God's name in it with the letter Dalad. And it's a very godly trait. And what was this trait? So let's just examine this a little bit deeper. What was she doing that she was thanking God for over here, Leah, right? Let's think about this. What was she doing? So at first, when she first had a child, of course she was thankful, but she wasn't this deeply thankful for. The second child, again, the third child, wow, Levi, it's already because she knew that Jacob, Yaakov is going to have four wives. So she's like, well, I'm on the fair share of everything. I'm within the confines of 
my rightful nature of the within the laws of nature, you could say. But then the fourth child, what does that mean? It means that now I have much more. Right now, it's a it's 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 something which is what we call na fochutz, opposite. Opposite thing actually happened to me. Because Leah what Leah was the was really the underdog here. She was not she was not supposed to be with Yaakov. She was supposed to be with Asaph. And that's that's why it says that her eyes were very soft. She was crying. She was crying that she should not go to the Chelek, to the portion of Asaph. She didn't want Asaph. She didn't want that Rasha. She wanted to be married to the Tzaddik, to Yaakov. But she didn't see it was possible. And in fact, because of her prayer, prayers, she, she was granted this wish and she was able to marry Yaakov. And yet still she was an underdog because Yaakov's favorite wife was Rachel. Right? Not not to take this like, oh, Yaakov, you know, he, what was the deal with why he loved her more? Not getting into that necessarily too much right now, but just Basically, Yaakov loved Rachel. Why? Because Rachel is the as is the mida of of Malchut, and Yaakov, which is Zer Anpin, wanted to channel down God's revelation down into Malchut, down into this world. Whereas Leah is connected to Bina, to the Sphera of Bina, which is um, which is divine intuition, understanding. It's a higher level. It's within the me- It's within the three intellectual parts that Hasidus Kabbalah speaks about. And that's a very high level. It's lofty. It's spiritual. And Yaakov, he he was definitely rolling with the spiritual, but his whole life mission is Yud Akiv, bringing the Yud into the Akiv, bringing the Yud, the highest revelation, down into this world. So he loved Rachel because that's what that was his soulmate that that he really saw his life you know really being all about so over here leah is the underdog and she, it seems like you know things aren't going to turn out you know for her in in and and yakov necessarily but over here we find that with a fourth child the opposite happened that while she was in this in the dark and crying and in the challenge of why, and in the pain of abandonment, and the the difficulties that she was going through, she never imagined that she would not be the underdog anymore. She would be the main one because she had the four. The, she had at least four children, and now this is a this is now the time to thank Hashem, to have gratitude to Hashem on a much deeper level. It's not just a thank you for, you know, for what you've given me, but thanking, thanking you for even the darkness and realizing that it's a much greater, it's a much greater intelligence that is going on, that is, that is governing the world that I, that, that I don't understand and has brought me here and seeing the kindness of this, of this divine intelligence of he even within the darkness even within the pain even within the challenge it was there there wasn't the abandonment it was really all there setting me up for something much greater to a much greater success that's the essence of hoda'a that's the essence of the jewish people so when the midrash says I'm Rabbi Yochai, Mishum Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is talking to you on a much deeper level. He's saying, Miyom Shebarait Olamo. And we could even apply this to ourselves. Could like, from the day that our, our world was created, So this coming of Le'ah is recognizing that Hashem is with me. Hashem is with us, even though it doesn't seem that way. So yes, she was able to see it within the moment, but she was teaching us and she was teaching 
the the Gemara says, the Talmud says that this name over here is the fundamental name of of the uh, of the Jewish people. It has it is what we're actually about. It has within it our essence, which is leodot, right? So here we are. We're coming towards uh, towards a number of, of very important holidays over here. We're coming towards the holiday of of Hanukkah. What's the holiday of Hanukkah all about? The holiday of Hanukkah is the holiday that we have, which is called Lehodot Ulehalel. Lehodot Ulehalel. Actually, the mitzvah, the Arizal tells us that that the that the holiday of of Hanukkah which is during this month of Kislev, which is the month of, which is the darkest month of the year on this side of the globe. It, it, and, and the coldest time, right? It's the shortest time of the day. It's the time of the darkness. During this, during this time, we have what? We have Chanukah, which the mitzvah of Chanukah, the, the Rambam says, actually, what was the holiday? The holiday was that they went out to war. And not only they went out to war, and they were the underdogs, right? They were, it was not supposed to happen, but they, not, not only did they re, re, repel the enemy, but they recaptured the Beit HaMikdash. And, and it seems like, like the whole miracle of the light was the byproduct of their very deep conviction that it that they will be successful and intertwined with hod with this aspect of hod with this aspect of having gratitude and 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 hod is a lot deeper than just having gratitude hod actually comes from the left side of the spherot which is connected to gavura which has to do, which is connected to bina which is above it right which is the you know connected to leah again so and um and within that dimension of gavura of strength of having inner strength inner conviction that i know that i will be victorious that's what and it's a victory that comes from a place of gratitude and acknowledgement and a deep conviction which is connected to bitachon to trust so it's it's so again, there's so far two levels of hoda'a, of, of gratitude. One is the obvious one that, you know, someone gives you something. Thank you. You know, you're, again, you're a mensch or you're not a mensch rather. You're not, you don't have it. If, if you don't say basic thank you. And I mean, you, you say that to your, we say that to our kids, you know, say thank you. That, and in fact, that's the whole purpose of saying brachot, saying blessings over our food. And says someone that doesn't say a blessing, the the Talmud says in Brachot thirty five that Rabbi Chanina Bar Papa says anyone that enjoys from this world and doesn't say a blessing it's as if they're stealing from Hashem from God because God has given you this you know water or whatever and um, said a blessing before um, <laughs> but God gives you a something. What do you want to do? You want to thank Hashem for for what you've given. You've been given, right? That's a basic thing. Next level of hod hoda is thanking Hashem for everything that He has done. And when we're able to see it, it's the it's Rabbi Nachman calls it me'ain olam haba. It's like the it's like the next world, which is what's going to happen when Mashiach comes. Where we're going to see that all of the darkness and all of the difficulties that we've ever gone through individually in our lifetimes collectively in all of the generations we're going to see the purpose of it all and the that says shira malos ainu kahomi we're like dreamers and azimal is hoping and then we're going to really fully be joyous we're going to have such a song and the talmud says that that there is no that all the songs are going to be obsolete except for uh, Psalm 100, Mizmor Letoda, Hariu Lashem Kolar. It's to say Mizmor Letoda, to say a Mizmor of thanking God, because we're going to be thanking God so much during that time 
right? That's why many tzaddikim, even after they pass, they said that they're gonna they're gonna make sure that Mashiach is going to come. But then they but then they came to their students in dreams and they were like, you know, you don't even know how good it's gonna be. You know, that very deep belief is something that right now is a belief for us. But then it's going to be an obvious, it's going to be, we're going to be thanking Hashem, right? We're going to be thanking Hashem so much for that. And that's what, uh, that's what Leah got on a, on a uh, on her level. And that's what she basically called the Jewish people, Hoda'a. That she saw that she was the underdog. It wasn't supposed to happen. But yet she has the majority amount of the children now. So now she is, is saying, wow, this isn't just a regular thanking Hashem for something that he's given. Yes, I'm thankful for the first three children. Absolutely. But for this, Hashem, because this is showing like a remarkable transfer, transformation that it wasn't meant to be. So according to nature, fine, I got, I got a fourth. Because there's going to be other, there's going to be other children, and I have three out of out of twelve. That makes sense if they're, they're four wives. But once the fourth one comes along, Yehuda says, "Hapam odetasham," because now this shows a a complete like one eighty. That from it being like this level now it turned out to be this level, and again the Maccabees they were think they were singing they were like it's supposed to be this, and it turned out to be that. And that's why Hanukkah is Behala Voda. We're we're giving thanks to Hashem. But that's the level of Hodav, thanking Hashem, not just for the obvious, but thanking Hashem for the transform for the transformative. Right? And who's the one that went out to war and won the wars? Yehuda Maccabee. Right? And actually the word Mika Mocha Ba'elim Hashem is Maccabee, is who is like you. In, in the mighty ones, right? Maccabi, they were, they were they were thanking Hashem as they were going to war, which which brings us to the third level of gratitude. And this is the this is a level of gratitude for something that hasn't yet happened, but yet we have trust and we have and Muna, we have bitachon that it will happen. We're already thanking God for something that is in the future. And this is strictly a Jewish thing, right? Very much a Jewish thing, right? That we're able to stay positive, even though it seems like right now it's so challenging and so dark and so confusing, but we're still thankful for something. That's a level that brings us what we call Simcha and positive thought, because it's interconnected. Our ability to have gratitude, even for something that has not yet happened, to contemplate and to thank Hashem for something that's going to that that for sure something good is going to be here, is is a level that brings us to Simcha. So our ability to, to actually stay happy comes from our ability to be grateful on all these three levels. The first level, being grateful for all the little things that we have in our life. And we have so many blessings. And there's a there's re research on, on, on the correlation of being grateful and being happy. There's uh, actually, I spoke to this researcher um, She's she's a university professor um, on the study of happiness, and in fact, like this week, I, I corresponded with Tal Ben Shahar, who studies happiness and positive psychology, and very much interests me, like the correlation of what is spoken about in Chassid and Kabbalah and a lot of what is researched in positive psychology. But in 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 this finding, they find that people that are grateful that that are, are grateful for, for at least five things in their life and they keep a gratitude journal are happier like that's you know it just really is that you and 
And in fact, how do we start our day? Modani. Right? It's the first 12 seconds, which they say the first 12 seconds of waking up in the morning. If we're able to align ourselves to that mind frame of gratitude, then our whole day is a different type of a day. And then, and then again, we have brachot. We have eighteen, which is chai, uh, the numbers of the morning blessings, where we thank God for our ability to stand up, our ability to be dressed, our ability, all all these. And exactly, we we start off our day with it's all thank you, and and all of prayer is really starts off with this th with this thank you, and we start off the prayer with hodu la shem ki uvishmo which was um right which was actually said the midrash says when the uh the oxen that were that were take that were returning the the aron the um the ark that was taken by the philistines it was placed it was placed it was placed on on, on the police team it was placed on this uh, wagon and it kept on going and they were singing, they were saying, the Mitra says, Hodu la Shem ki uvishmo, they were thankful. To be the one that carries. To be the one that carries. So, so all of prayer really, really is thanking God for the, for the nature around us, thanking God for everything. We say these Psalms we say, and, 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 and the, the prayer is really all, all revolves around again, Hoda'a. But then when we come to a place of seeing of of seeing something that was supposed to be this way and it turned out to be this way, and we see it, such as the holidays of Hanukkah or Purim specifically, then we have a time that we're that we actually have this deeper level of Hoda'a, which is it, which is actually also, we're supposed to look look at those those holidays, those those times in our lives, of finding those those times where it was supposed to be one way, but it turned out to be another way, and we know that God God's communication was that, and we're so we're supposed to give thanks to Hashem for that, right? And it's a very very deep thing to do that. In fact, it says it's so deep that. Um, that the that the midrash says that God wanted to make Chizkiyahu Chizkiyahu um, Mashiach and Sancherev Gogu Magog, and he was supposed to be that, but because he didn't thank God enough, he just was sure of God and went to sleep. He was sure. Well, he, no, he he didn't thank God for the miracles that were done. So God said you know forget it you know so we see that that mashiach right is very very much intertwined with with hoda with thinking and and that's that's the second level of, of thinking god when when you see that things were were supposed to turn out a certain way but then they turned out a different way which is actually what's what's happening here in in israel specifically where we had in the last month, coming from Gaza, over ten thousand rockets, and it's uh, and it's crazy, and it's in insane to think about that. Ten thousand rockets, and how many were, you know, like it's a miracle. So we say it's the Iron Dome, but we have to really thank Hashem. And over and over here from Lebanon, I mean, you know, again. There were rockets, and they Very definitely fine. did yeah. did did damage in in certain places. But but whenever we see that, I mean, specifically for us who are living here in Israel, it could be it it is it is anxious, right? It it does put us in a certain you know uncomfortability on the edge, on the edge right? But yet, but when we when we could almost transform that again from that place of gavura and being like, I'm actually thank thank you, Hashem, Mizmor Letoda, that 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 this is this is a miracle that it was supposed to be this way and turned out another way. Actually, is a blessing that we say um, where 
uh, where we fly on an airplane or 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 we sail somewhere or whatever, right? Birkat Gomel, where you're actually thanking God for for the miracle of actually being safe as as you're traveling and and we it's without without a, without Hashem's name, but definitely is an idea of that for sure. Uh, Michelle. Yes, I wanted to ask about the third level. Yeah. Um, I can understand it regarding uh, prophecy. Um, um, like now, thanking God for Mashiach, not here yet, but will be coming. Um, in one's personal life, if one has a goal that's, you know, admirable and good and positive, is it kind of like forcing the hand of God, if you will, like say someone is looking for um, a soulmate mm -hmm. and doesn't have one at the moment, but chooses to work at that third level. Thank you, God, so much for bringing me my soulmate. Yeah. Um, can you can you speak to that? I mean, I I know you know there's law of attraction and mm -hmm. things may be more likely to occur if one is um, thinking about it, visualizing it, and even thanking God. This is my question, even though it hasn't happened yet. Exactly. So that is the third level, and and. Yeah, and I was I was just gonna go I was just gonna go into that that it that the third level is is really the level that Leia was teaching us, and it's the level again that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, which is you know the master of Kabbalah, that says that from the day of creation nobody thanked God until Leia came along. It's going on an even deeper level because Leia was was not just thanking God for on the first level and the second level, right? She was even thanking God for something way in the future because who came from Yehuda, right? And I'd like to actually quote you um, the – oh, where is it? Oh, man. What is the first hmm. The first level is thanking God for the for the obvious, for the things that are very obvious. Second level is th thanking God for things that were challenging and we saw they turned out well. Third level is thanking God for things that are going to be in the future. So thank you, God. listen to this uh, that the Shari Ora says. Shari Ora was, was Rabbi Yosef uh, Ge Gekaltia, who wrote a very important Kabbalistic work that the Arizal quotes many times. So he says as follows. He says, when Yehuda was born, who is Yehuda? Yehuda is the secret of Magen David, of, this, of the, of the Magen David, right? Of the Star of David, which is, um, which is the secret of the fourth leg, referring to the fourth leg of the idea of the Merkava, the chariot, right? Where we have the first, the we have um, Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, and then we have we have uh, David, right? Or another place, it's Rachel, not, not for now, which is, but it goes to, the, it's being connected to the fourth child. So what did Leah say? Leah said, Apam odet Hashem. So he says, Apam, so he says, Apam bevadai gimel, that's the three. And it says that it became now, Apam odet, now it came to the number four, which is, what's the number four? The number four is referring to the level of malchut of kingship, of in in other words, in, in Kabbalah and Kabbalistically, malchut refers to the revealed level, but it's also it's revealed, but it's unknown. It's almost like the earth, which is, you know, that if you're going to plant something, things are going to come out. But it's, but there's the unknown force, which is which is which is malchut, right? Which is sprouting forth exponentially beyond what we could ever imagine. And when she was saying this, when she was saying Apam Odet Hashem, she was saying that that I am she was infusing according to the Shari aura, 
she was infusing this level of the potentiality, which is that, which is the fourth, this fourth level, which is Malchut, which is what Yehuda is all about. She was infusing, she was saying, I have, I have emuna, I have, I have bitachon, that even though I'm planting whatever, but I have emuna that anything is possible. Basically, she was saying, who's that referring to? It's referring to David, to, to King David, to David Amel, who, who is the secret of Mashiach, which is the secret of the the ultimate potential of the whole universe, which hasn't yet happened. So although she was thanking God for Yehuda, and that was the second level of, of showing that the negative could be transformed into good, but yet, yet she was manifesting or she was thanking God for something that's going to happen in the future, which is referring to that fourth level, the Shari Aura says, that will bring about something which is way beyond. And this is also echoed by um, by the Shla HaKadosh, by the Holy Shla. He says that, that in God's name, we've got the Yud K Vav K. So the fourth letter is the letter He, which is the letter which which is connected to Malchut, to, to kingship. And she and and she was saying that it's deeply connected to kingship, connect, connected to King David, who was all about praising Hashem all the time in Tehillim. That's all he. That's basically what we find all of Tehillim is about. This ten songs of praise of King David. That that ten ten general songs that he was praising God on all these on all these levels and. When King David was praising Hashem and singing, he was he was he was singing not just when it was good, he was think he was singing when it was also not good, and he was thanking God when it was also not good, because he knew that the not good is ultimately it, it's it's ultimately an illusion because the only good is really God. And he's connected to that song, to that power of song, which, which is very like contradictory. Because on the one hand, on the one hand, there's there's a challenge, but on the other hand, there's a level of song that you're singing. So it may not be unhappy, like fully all it, but it, but it's a level of a song. It's a it's there, there's something there that he was doing. And and that's what that's what Leah was saying. And and um and on a deeper level, that's what the Midrash says, that all of the all of the sacrifices and all the songs are going to be like obsolete, except for Korban Toda, except for thanking God. Because the the thanking God, the Hoda'a, the gratitude, this 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 level, this third level, is very much the level of La'ati Lavo of in the future. Of what's going to be in the future, because what's the reason now that we feel that we're limited? Because we we feel like we're three D, basically. And she was. This is the fourth child. And again, going maybe a little into a deeper interpretation of what Shari Or is saying, saying she was good. She was on a level of four D. She was on a level that wasn't, or or even beyond the four D. But she was. She wasn't in this linear place, which is stuck in in reality or nature is like this she already saw that nature is is an illusion that anything could happen that 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 so she was she, she was layab yeah but she was manifesting down into this into this lower into into this world which actually very much connects to to leia where we don't find that by by rachel by by rachel as much Right, Rachel was very much the here and now, and she was the um the Malchut, but Malchut the way it is receiving. And over here, Bina is a level of intuition, divine intuition, divine possibility, understanding that she was birthing a higher existence that even superseded what Rachel was able to do because of because of her ability to go to this deep level of manifestation basically of genuinely thanking Hashem. Now there are so many stories like this of going ahead and thanking God before the thing actually happened. So that's 
Exactly. So the uh, actually the uh, it's brought down. The Baba Sali used to do this, and he says the Saadeni ve'ivashe. He said it says in Teilim Saadeni literally means support me, and I will be redeemed. But the Baba Sali says, and this goes back to Rabbi Yaakov Abu Chatzera and the whole that they used to make seudot. Saadeni comes from the word seuda. If you need something, say a seud, do make a seuda. And many people say the uh, the um, Nishmat Kol Chai, the song. It's a very, very special song that it says that, uh, well, it depends. There's different opinions who wrote it. But he, but when we say the Nishmat Kol Chai, we're basically thanking God for something that has not yet happened. Wow. But we're thanking God already for it. Now, it is proven that this has an effect. And the Nishmat Kol Chai could be, could be found in the Sidurim um, in, uh, in on, on during the Shabbat prayers, and it's read by by many people as as a very big skula, as a very big thing, you, you know, opportunity to bring about something that we want to happen by already thanking God for it. Right? Again, this this doesn't mean like uh, you know, God, I you know, I want to. Um, I don't know, own the biggest yacht or I want to buy the, I want to buy the, the New York uh, giants or I don't know. It, it It's not, it, 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 you know, we have to realize where we're at and what we want to bring. But if it's something which is true and something which is something that God wants, right. When we know that, you know, if, if it's truthful and something that, could bring more godliness in the world if 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 that is accomplished, not just for my ego and for my needs or for my me, it's for it's for God's sake. So I'm already thanking him because God of course wants me to have it, but he wants me to be in that frequency to be able to receive it. And when we we are in that frequency of of gratitude, of thank of of thanking Hashem for it, so then so then that is given and it's given in a great in a great measure so then so then there's a lot uh, there's a, a saying by the Baal Shem Tov that when um when someone is in a state of of need then they should they should light a candle for be mayor balanes and they should um they should uh be in that state of of joy of of putting you know it doesn't have to be like like a full meal per se but but just you know uh, on uh, in terms of like giving to others so that creates a yeshua that creates a very a very great opportunity that that comes about and then there's stories of uh of so many individuals that had particular issues and there's a story that that comes to mind about a person that was rabbi arush says this in his book that uh that there was this person that was uh you know taken to the to the hospital and uh you know they did the doctors didn't give him a positive prognosis for his one of his eyes and he hears this and he starts thanking God and the doctors think that he's crazy. Like, what are you talking about? You know, <laughs> what are you, what are you saying over here? And he's thanking God. And he's like, thank you, God, for my eye that you've given me. That is good. Thank you, Hashem, for that. I thank you for that. And, uh, and the story goes after a couple of days, they got, they received an, the, they looked at the uh, charts again and they saw that the other eye pretty much is is on the way to healing and because he was saying thank you and he was he was going around the ward he was saying saying thank you and there's many stories like that um on a personal level we did that in in our family when our daughter was was in uh was in in the hospital um very uh serious uh uh burn and um and we we got it into our minds my my wife and i that 
you know, right now we're on the state of mind of gratitude. Right now we're in the state of mind of thanking God. And, and, and it was like, that's it. That's it. That's, that's that. And there was a, there was a marked difference, a tremendous difference that happened like very, very shortly. I, I could say this from, from a personal place. Um, but for us, and this is like, again, where, where we're at right now and in, in, in challenging times that just to bring this down to us in challenging times that, that, that we're in, you know, we could get fixated on the news. We could get fixated on what's wrong, you know, in, 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 in the world, right. All the conspiracy and this and that. And yeah. And, and we're human and, and, you know, we have, you know, we have emotions and we have uh, the, the ups and downs and it's, and it's, how do we stay in, in a much more of a positive mind, mind frame? So it goes on all these three levels. Like the first level is to basically find the places to be grateful for that each of us have in our lives, right? to write down what we're what we're grateful for you know and to to find what we're grateful for it right it, it right away but right but not just everything it helps when you're specific it doesn't have to be such like deep things necessarily but it could be yeah but it could be any it could be thank you for this cup of you know whatever every but when we're specific it it, it really helps us because it puts us in that 100%. That's the biggest one. And it gives us our uh, our state of mind. That's actually what we say, Mishma Kolchai, right? We say, thank you for all those parts of our of, of, of who we are. Um, and then the second level of, of recognizing that there are miracles that are happening right now. So many miracles. And 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 to, to hold on and to look at those miracles and to... Mm -hmm. And to thank Hashem for those miracles. And that's such a source of happiness. Because yes, there's the there's the there's the challenges, the craziness outside, but we're not focusing on that. We're focusing on something which is much more divine, something which is much more real than what the outside looks. Again, it's the number four. Hoda'a is the number four, it's the level of the four D. It's going into like something which is much deeper, which is going on. And that's the second level. And then the third level of gratitude is the, is, is that level of thinking God for something that did not yet even happen. So yes, we're pray on the one hand, we're praying and we are feeling pain and we're feeling uh, all of these emotions. Uh, it, all the time yet we can't forget that god hashem wants us to thank him already now for something which certainly is going to turn out well again it's not the it's not obvious it's not 1d 2d 3d it's 4d it's going into the energy of Yehuda. It's going into the energy of the of the unknown. It's going into the the possi possibility of intuition, of 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 manifest of manifesting something real. I'm not manifest. We're we're not the ones who are manifesting. That's the big difference between you know in the world. You know the the people are man. I'm manifest. It's not it's not you. It's not us. Right. It's it's we are bringing about we're, we're recognizing that Hashem wants to bring this about in in the in the universe and our state of mind then puts us in that frequency to be able to actually have it right to actually be there because what are we going to be doing in the future mizmor letoda we're going to be thanking Hashem all the time because it's it's just like wow thank you you know. Yehudim, right? The, the the essence of 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 Judaism. Um,
Yes. Yeah, so, uh, Michelle, so steps for steps for doing this. So steps for doing this is very important for us to recognize that it's not easy. And that means that, yes, we, we, we're thanking God for something that didn't yet happen, but we want to be in a, in a, in a, in a state of mind that we're not bombarded by so many other, other thoughts and other um, conflicting uh, opinions, right? That that go through it because because then we don't truly believe it because it's it's not coming. We're listening to people. We're listening to them. exactly, and it's not really us. So it takes really checking in inside and having that having that quiet to be able to tune inside, to be able to close our eyes, right, and to be able to shift our perspective from being reactive and defend having to defend ourselves versus being again hod hoda is from the left side which is gavura of going almost on the on the attack like i it, I'm, obviously it's not something but it, but inside of on a on a positive attack of, of a spiritual attack of of recognizing that something good is about to uh is going to happen right and to so see you, it and to, and to visualize it so would you recommend like do the first level then do the second level um and and maybe have some quiet time in between so that you're in that state of mind and then um move into the third level um, with maybe a, a specific intention that the that that future outcome will be for the highest and the best of that person and all people involved. It's absolutely. I I think that all three levels go go hand in hand. Although it doesn't, it should not stop us. And it's not supposed to stop us from having gratitude for what we actually have, because what that does, in other words, if if someone just jumps to the third level and they're having the, these positive intentions, um, and, and you know, and I've I've read like different research on it that 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 has, you know, that that has an effect on our minds, the way that we think that something is going to happen has has a physical effect on on our neurons and it brings about a different outcome like on a, on a very on a very um biological level within within our minds so so the third so someone so someone could jump into that you know on some level but it it's more it's the long term Right of be the the possibility of being someone who is a actually the word for for a Yehudi a, a Jew like the Jewish people is actually being on that third level of imagining something that has not yet happened, but it's not just one time or another time. It's actually like fully being that all the time, and um, and the way to do that it's like it's it is like what you're saying michelle that you know when when we accustom ourselves to say blessings you know thank you hashem for this water you know saying umbracha for that or thanking hashem for you know a, a rainbow or for you know everything in our lives so then we become grateful type of individuals again not just saying it by rote but by saying it with a deeper um kavana deeper intention mm -hmm. and then that opens us, us up for being for seeing a lot more of the miracles in our lives but it doesn't mean necessarily if you're saying blessings then you're also going to say blessings for the other great things and 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 the proof of that is that king Chizkiyahu didn't say and he was he was 
he was a great person that for sure thank God for all the obvious things, but he didn't thank God in on the, on that didn't praise God deeply enough. And so, you know, we have to be cognizant that we're asked to go a little bit deeper and to actually, you know, like see that because we can't go to the third level without seeing the second level. If that, if that makes sense, like, because if we, if we can't see that things align and things connect, things do connect all the time, but we miss it. In other words, and we're like, no, that was a chance. That was a, right. That was a, what we call mikre. That was a, actually a Malik tries to do that to us to try to see everything as a coincidence, as something not necessarily connected. But we know that the letters Mikre is Rak Me Hashem, only from God. That everything is, there's no coincidences. And we see God's hand in that. And we thank God for those, those coincidences. We're like, it's not a coincidence. I know that it's not a coincidence. It's your hand in there. And I want to thank you for that. That's the second level. And then the, the third level is thanking Hashem for not for something which has not yet happened. Something that that has not yet happened takes a, a, a you know a bigger a bigger person. It takes like a it takes a lot of stamina and a lot of we could say exercise to be that type of a person. But that's what is expected of us, you know, of almost like that's who we are, you know, in terms of the Jewish people. And when you when you look at history. Who would imagine, you know, where we're at right now, right? Where are the Romans? Where are the Greeks? Where are the Persians? And here we are defying history, right? As that, you know, Mark Twain, um, you know, famous uh, saying, why is that? Because we've had these great people in our history that are already thankful for something else that is going to happen beyond the pogrom or the shtetl, you know, environment or this type of an uh, enemy and that type of enemy enemy that is going to be good, right? Like the famous saying of um, of uh, Anna Frank that despite everything that's happening in in the world, I still believe that you know humanity is good and the world is good, and and that seems like such a naive thing to to say and to think. Um, but it's filled with a very deep Jewish conviction, which is in the heart and soul of what is within this universe, which is, which is goodness is ready to unfold. We are here to birth, birth it. Leah is like the ultimate, like mother that is birthing the unknown and teaching us to birth our unknowns. Right. And there's so many unknowns <laughs> currently. But what we do know that is known is that uh, we have uh, we have something which is great, you know, that is unfolding. Right. So, OK, um, Brenda, should we do should we do a little five minute, five, five minute meditation? Okay. Okay. Great. Um, so I see a question over here, Cindy. Level four. So we're talking about three levels, but the but the fourth level is basically like the of of Yehuda is called like the number four, is basically that third level, which is like that future. that future. Exactly. It's the four D. It's like the it's it's seeing things in in a much greater way, right? Okay, so let's um, so let's do this. So if um, all of us that are here, uh, feel free to um, to close your eyes, keep them open, whatever, and placing your feet firmly on the ground, and your shoulders dropped, hands on um, or open palms on your thighs 
either holding them together and taking in your breath from your nose all the way down to your belly and exhaling with a long exhalation. Breathing in from our nose and exhaling with our mouth. And as we're taking in that breath from our nostrils and exhaling, we're imagining that that inhalation comes from the top of our mind, from our crown, dropping all the way down to our belly and exhaling outwards into the universe. Feeling our, our feet fully on the ground while our mind in our crown is drawing from the universe. And as we do that, an imagery of Jacob's ladder comes to mind. It says, Sulam Mutsav Arza, that the ladder is fixed on the ground. Verosho Magia Hashamaima, and its head reaches all the way to the sky. But not just the sky, Shamaim, but Shamaima, beyond the sky, to the universe. And beyond the universe. All while our feet are firmly on the ground. And the verse says, Hine Malache Elohim Olim Veyodim Bo. That the angels of Hashem are rising and are descending within it. And our sages say that within it is within Jacob and within us. So just simply allow the angels your personal angels to rise up, clearing any thing that needs to be cleared. All the way from the base of your feet, climbing all the way up your ladder taking away any pain, any place of blockage, taking it up and clearing it to the universe, letting it out. And then the angels are coming down drawing in new awareness new light 
simply allow the troops in. Allow God to give you his divine assistance. Drawing it down all the way into your ladder. Drawing down those blessings all the way down to your feet. And as we imagine this ladder of Jacob is fixed and fixated for all of eternity, where each and every one of us can connect to, realign with, says that Sulam is a letters of prayer of tefillah that are ascending and God is reciprocating and answering. And as we do that, we can imagine how that ladder is so firmly connected to gratitude of being strong and having the bitachon, the emuna. of standing and being that receptacle of light, of God's communication within our personal world and the universe. If we think about the head of Jacob being surrounded in that dream, protected, so his mind is guarded, his mind is able to imagine, his mind is able to dream. We know that the sense of this month, the month of Kislev, the dark month, the days are short, is the sense of dreaming. Yaakov was firmly protected with his with his head with the rocks around his head. And the ladder, his ladder, firmly on the ground as the head of the ladder is on the tippy top beyond the universe. Within the world of the 4D of all possibilities. Where the, lad, where the angels that go up are Yaakov's limited angels. The angels that come down are unlimited.
who would have thought that Yaakov would have 12 tribes? Who would have thought that Yaakov was going to have 70 root souls? A nation of 600,000 coming out of Egypt, coming into the land of Israel. And all of the un unimaginable history defying nature. And that dream of Yaakov is our dream as well. So let's take three breaths as we count backwards and imagine harnessing this ladder, feeling this ladder and knowing that you have the ability to climb back up this ladder when you so choose. Three, two, and with the last breath, let us take in all of those angels and thank Hashem for all of their incredible blessings that they surely bring. And the number three. All right. Rabbi, can I ask you a question? It's Karen. Can you hear me? Yes. I Really quick, what's the significance of 11? You said when you wake up in the first 11 seconds, something. Is there a significance to that? Yeah, it actually, there's actually been research on that, that the first 11 to 12 seconds in the morning, our, our mm -hmm. minds or our neshama comes back to us. And it's a very important it's a very important time of, of what we instill during that time in our, in our minds right. that has the, has the possibility of affecting our entire day. Right. I didn't know if it was just the, you know, the 11 was symbolic or it was, or what it was. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Thank you for the wonderful class. Pleasure. Pleasure. So should be a happy Thanksgiving to us all, happy Thanksgiving to to, um, to America, to Israel, to uh, the entire the entire world as we bring more of the as we come closer, right, to the days of uh, of you know of Mashiach. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Blessings, everyone.